So the idea of those, um, the, these little short sort of five to eight minutes at the beginning of the class, these little nuggets, um, they're, they're what uh, Saido Utejaniya, the Burmese teacher, many of you will have heard me talk about, um, it's, they're what he calls right information. So it just sort of, uh, in a way, seeding the mind. It's really helpful to do before we practice seeding the mind with information that's going to help us with the practice, help us remember um, important sort of elements uh, of the, yeah, of, of the perspective that um, we're trying to bring to experience. <clears throat> So it's just really helpful to, to um, it helps us with right attitude. It helps us with right view to, to bring in some of this, this information, right information, some right ideas. And there'll be different ideas for different practices, but for this particular practice, um, yeah, Mokshika and I are sort of just seeding um, ideas that will help you uh, remember what to do in the practice. So a little quote from Sayadu Utejaniya this morning, uh, which will stand for right information this morning. So he says, when you interfere with the watching mind, insight cannot arise. So learn to watch objectively with bare attention. So when you interfere with the watching mind, insight cannot arise. And that's why we're doing the practice. Uh, so learn to watch objectively with bare attention. So I'm going to unpack that uh, a, a little bit. Uh, so in interfering, we're, we're interfering with uh, what's happening uh, within our own um, minds all the time. Um, usually trying to change uh, something that um yeah we're, we're not happy with so it's either that we're trying to make something go away uh something be more something be less something be different um or we're trying to make something happen something else happen so if you like the 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 watching mind the awareness mind isn't uh neutral it isn't um it's got it it's got quite a strong agenda and with awareness, we're looking to not have that strong agenda. That the, there is a, a a mindset that's what's going to be helpful here. What's going to be helpful in observing what's happening, in knowing what's happening. But we want the mind to have this natural, open quality rather than uh, pushing for, um, in a way, a more sort of conditioned, habitual sort of well, I want this to happen, or I don't think that should be happening. Yeah, so that, that's a little bit of interfering. And then with the, the next bit of the quote, were, well, the end, we're learning to watch objectively with bare attention. Um, so bare attention is, is not um, something I talk a lot about. In a way, I talk about awareness as being um, having... Uh, particular qualities, qualities of of sort of of interest and openness, um, a certain sort of warmth to it. Um, but bare attention, you could see as having some of these qualities as well, particularly the quality of receptivity, this openness to what's happening, rather than the the drivenness of an agenda. But also acceptance. I think bare attention has this accepting whatever arises. Uh, can, can I be with that? Can I be, uh, am I willing to just observe, just notice what's happening? And that helps with uh, the objectivity that Utejin is talking about to um, watch objectively with bare attention. So again, it's 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 not a a, a cool um, or cold 
uh, objectivity. It has a, a quality of, of warmth, but it allows us to see what's happening uh, more clearly. And it allows us to take what's happening less personally. And, and that's really, really crucial when we start uh, taking it personally. It's, it's you know, we, we get wound up with what's happening because of what we imagine it says about us as a meditator or as a human being. So, so this ability to, to hold a sort of bare attention um, is really, really helpful in practice. And, and it's sort of the opposite to this constantly getting in there and trying to tweak or manipulate or maneuver our experience in particular ways in the interfering mind. So I'll just finish with a, a little question. Uh, so why can't insight arise when the mind, uh, when the watching mind, when there's interference going on, um, when there's a lack of acceptance, really? Um, it's sort of obvious, isn't it? But it, it maybe helps to get clear about it so that, that that's something that informs the practice as well in a way it's a little bit of a counter to or or a help in a, in noticing that uh interfering mind oh this is this is not going to help um the mind see more clearly because when um there's we we're, we're interfering we have an agenda about what's happening we're not opening to open to what more could be happening that we just don't know about. We just haven't, uh, we, we've got our, our fixed little ways that are only as big as the mind has been. Uh, it doesn't take into account how big, how clearly the mind awareness could see. Because we're looking through this slightly grubby lens of greed, hatred, and delusion. I want this and I don't want that and I don't care about that or all, all that sort of um, even to a small degree that's impacting where we're looking through the lens of those conditioned habits um, and insight to to really see clearly to see the nature of uh, our experience we need a, if you like a clear fresh lens uh, and that's that comes about through the conditions of uh, right mindfulness, um, right view, uh, right effort. Okay, so that's all I'll say for today.